So, Pretty Prime's signature pistol finally got its Prime, and to be honest, it is a very stunning looking weapon. But, has the Prime really enhanced this base gun to finally beat out other options in single target damage? Now, how has the Velox Prime been enhanced when compared to its, well, original base form, or just the base Velox? Well, I'll show its IPS on the screen now, but the things I want to cover are the fact that it now has a higher base crit multiplier at uh, 2 instead of 1.8, it has a higher base crit uh, status chance at 32 instead of 22 as well. It has now gained an innate dash in two Vs instead of just two Vs. And uh, overall, its damage is now higher by uh, <laughs> a whole three points. But hey, three points is three points. And it's, well, obviously due to it having a higher fire rate, more mag, its damage in the burst have obviously increased overall. And since it has higher fire rate, you're going to be applying more status because you're shooting just a ton of more bullets. Hence why I call this a bullet hose of a weapon. Now, the weapon is overall, obviously, a direct upgrade from the normal Velox. But it's not a groundbreaking discovery as it is still just another single target, we uh, single target weapon. And it, well, is e easily outclassed by other weapons. But it's still fun to use as a bullet hose, as you can tell. It kind of just goes for it and spews out a ton of bullets. So... For today, I will have two builds for everybody to look at and uh, we'll basically mess around with as is. But obviously, these videos here are for y'all to understand how the weapon works and to see how it is used in certain builds. Obviously, as this is a guide you can follow, copy the build if you want, but this is not the best build. I will never give you, obviously, something I will say is the best option overall. There will always be differences. So make sure you mix it up and play to your style when looking at the builds. But let's go ahead and cover those two builds after you today. Now, once again, like I said, these builds are not the best options and should never be considered the best options. These are just so you can have an idea on what you should try to build around based off how I found the weapon, but obviously build as you see fit. So here's a corpus build I have uh, made. Obviously, a celerated isotope is not a requirement. This was just for more fire rate, but it is running a magnetic toxin and radiation just from this. But obviously, you could easily ignore that. This build is actually quite fun because it helps with the single target issue by giving it seeker. It punches through two targets and overall the magnetic is there just to have fun and damage shields if I don't kill them instantly. And the uh, toxins for toxin because corpus are weak to the toxin. So I obviously have steel path enemies here already. So how does it how does it perform? Oh, there goes all those guys. Let's reload. There's all them. Other than him because I missed. There goes him. There they go. And obviously, if my aim is bad or I run out of bullets, I'm going to obviously not kill them instantly, but they die rather quickly and it's still quite fun to use. Now, uh, you may be wondering, OK, well, why not primary merciless, not primary, secondary merciless, something of the sort. Well, since this weapon is a more status based weapon than it is a crit weapon, Cascadia Empowered overall just feels like a better option as it gives you that fly damage you would want added on to everything because it's on status effect deal plus 750 damage matching the damage of the status and since we're applying magnetic radiation and toxin we're getting at three times which is just overall helpful but obviously what's the other build like well the other build let's go ahead and cover that one next shall we with the next build this is the build that sadly has its own condition that has to be met the armor strip build has two ways to being met you either use hydroid or use two uh, green Archon shards. That is its only issue I have currently found running this build here with heat, corrosive, and radiation. If you want the full armor strip, you need two green Archon shards or you need to run a Hydroid. So I'm gonna show the build off with neither because right now on my Protea, she has neither. So how does it perform without either of those options? Well, obviously low tier trash is low tier trash. It dies really fast. Same thing with these guys, they should die rather quickly because they're, once again, they're just slightly above that of, uh, where are the rest of them? Here they are. They're just slightly above that of Butchers, so they're obviously going to die pretty quickly. When it comes to Heavy Gunners, on the other hand, sadly, it does take a little bit of time. As you see, because they are heavily armored. Weirdly enough, though, the Bombards take a little bit less time. What I'm noticing with this is, once again, like most builds, if you want to use Corrosive Radiation Heat, you're going to need to be able to strip their armor. So if you had mixed it with, like I said, Hydroid, 
who naturally gets a benefit from dealing with corrosive you're obviously going to be able to armor strip basically instantly and take full advantage of the build as you saw nothing really was able to stand that nothing there nothing there and well once again nothing there now, if I was to equip this with anyone other than Perdia, because she gives it a 40% uh, ammo for C bonus, uh, it'd have to be Mirage, purely because of her decoys, because sadly Eclipse does not affect Cascadia Empowered at all. So you basically gain no benefit out of it other than just getting the base damage. But obviously, how does it still perform? Well, since we now have more bullets, just overall more things getting shot at. So obviously it's still going to perform very well. As it should, obviously, because I once again plan on using the Corpus build uh, instead of the Armature build, purely because I don't wish to have to force people to run either two green Archon shards or uh, Hydroid to get the full benefit out of armor stripping. And as you can tell, even on, well, uh, the non recommended frame, because Perdia gives it uh, ammo, ammo efficiency, it still does quite well. So. I'm going to go ahead and get everything set up for Steel Path, but I'll see you guys in Steel Path. All right, well, here we are in uh, Steel Path. I went ahead and chose like a Corpus mission, like I said. So I brought my Velox, I brought my Burst on, I brought my Okinas, I brought my Panzer Volpa Finalist. So let's see how long we can last inside of here. So like I had said earlier, this is obviously a single target weapon. So its biggest problem is going to be hitting multiple targets at one point. But when it is uh, able to punch through multiple targets, as you'll see, it does still do quite a lot of damage. You try not to die because I'm running uh, shields. But as you see, as I miss, it obviously does a lot of damage. And since we're running radiation, whenever we do get the radiation proc, they will target their uh, allies instead of us for a short time. But as you see, Toxin goes through if they don't die to the Toxin or all the bullets, the Magnetic breaks their shield off, and the Radiation will make them target their allies instead of us for a little bit. And as I had said earlier, Cascadia Empowered actually does work as long as you are using stuff like Sentient Surge and other, uh, other abilities similarly. I don't know why it's different from all the others, but for some reason Sentient Surge uh, does work while, like, Galvanized mods don't. I don't, I don't see how that makes sense, but... I'm not going to complain because it's still a benefit in damage. But overall, as you can tell, nothing really has any issue getting, well, killed by the weapon. Oh, there we go. Well, other, than, other than it being one of the more annoying ones, I've, as you saw, I really didn't have any issues dealing with them. So I'm going to go ahead and wait till a Acolyte spawns and get back to y'all. So I'll see you whenever an Acolyte spawns. All right, after a little bit of time has passed, we finally got one. Ooh, it's angst as well. So since these guys do rock a little bit of armor, I think I may have to strip. Well, I say strip. I may have to proc my uh, four on them to go through it, but I may not. So as you see, without any like benefit, it's not doing that bad. But obviously, uh, my galvanized mods aren't active. So let me try to get those active. Where she kills my Jesus. So they're active. Do they benefit me? Uh, not that much. So we're going to go ahead and proc this to help me out a little bit more. There we go. So obviously with the build I'm running, it's not going to be the best option for fighting uh, Acolytes because they are armored creatures. But obviously if I was running a four Tau Forged, uh, green Tau Forged specifically, not four. Yeah. I was running two green Archon shards spec for corrosion status. I'd probably be able to proc through all of the armor and make it more beneficial. I'm going to go ahead and head to uh, Extract and give you all my final thoughts in my Orbiter. So I'll see y'all at the or uh, Orbiter. So here we are back in my Orbiter. So what do I think about the Velox Prime? Overall, when it comes to the Velox Prime, I recognize that there is obviously better. There are better options for single target damage. There are better options overall for just weapons in general. An example, if I want really good single target damage, I could use stuff like the Lex in its base form. I could use the uh, Dual Toxicist for Ak Bolto. Hell, I could even use uh, one of my uh, kit guns. The Onos technically can be single target damage. Despair is single target damage, but not in otherwise. The Velox is fun, though. It's a bullet hose of old gun, and it shoots quite well for what it's after. Is it going to get you through Steel Path everywhere? Obviously not. 
Is it still fun to use? Obviously, it's a bullet hose that spreads a lot of status thanks to its, well, high status to start with, but obviously these builds are here for y'all to get an idea of how the gun fires, how it works, what you could build, not what you should build. Build how you see fit. But if you guys want to see more uh, build reviews like this, I do still have other weapons to cover. So tell me what guns you may want to see in the comments down below. I will read them and see what y'all want. Other than that, make sure you guys hit that sub button, hit that bell for post notifications, and hit the like button if you want to see more stuff like this. Uh, other than that, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace out.